Well, good to see everybody here. Thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate what you do. Uh, starting with, we'll go through quickly again. We got FIU uh, Thursday. So today in our world is a Sunday. A um, little bit different, though, because you didn't play a game. You know, typically you come off a of Saturday. So coaches, you get habitual about your calendars or routines or superstitions or whatever you call it. And, um, you know, the first game, and then we're playing a Thursday night game, even the second game. And then the third game's an open date, so it really it's going to take about a month until you really get into a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday true routine of what's going on. But uh, we've got Florida International uh, Thursday, 732 on ESPNU. It's a road travel for the opener. Um, last time that we uh, had success, and we haven't played a lot of first games on the road, was I think back in about 2005 with Coach Hep. Um uh, you guys are aware of Coach Turner, you know, with his background from the pros, but from Illinois and the Big Ten success he had, taking those guys to the Rose Bowl. I was at Northwestern at the time, competing against his teams. Did a great job there. He's doing a great job at FIU. The, one of the great things about this program now is the staff. Steve Shankweiler, 42 years as the offensive coordinator, been all over the place. Ron Cooper was the head coach at Louisville, uh, Eastern Michigan, coach from Notre Dame to Texas LSU, Kurt Dole, their special team coach. I, I remember uh, after national championship game at LSU, running in, into him at Harris after the game that night, and he was rolling craps. After they, I was mad at him because he just won the national championship from us. So they got a veteran, veteran staff. They, a lot of those guys have been together a long time. This is their fourth year. You got a veteran offensive line. The whole crowd's back. Quarterback's going to be one of the best players uh, in their conference. I'd compare him very similar to the quarterback we saw last year from Western Kentucky. Although the Dowdy kid was a six-year uh, player, Magoo uh, set their school record as a sophomore. Very mature, very competent. Ron's a great quarterback developer and things they put on their guys. So uh, the front five quarterback, maybe the best dynamic players, a multiple tight end that flexes out and uh, had a great game against us last year, that running back's back. So everyone basically back on offense, well coached uh, defensively. They have been very, very good on defense for years, uh, going back we played them last year, but the year before that, they were fifth in the country in, in red zone defense. They've always been active, good players, good scheme. They went through some coordinators, but Coach Cooper's been there while he's a new coordinator. He's not. He was kind of a part of running it last year, so they've, they've always played great defense, and, and we saw last year we struggled a lot against those guys, and, and it was a, a, a close game and a tough game. Uh, the special teams guys uh, are back. So they should be sound in FAs. So they're a five and seven football team from a year ago. Got a lot of guys back, veteran staff. It's a team a year ago, if you look statistically in our game, it's basically an even game. We might have had 30 more total yards. I think we had one more first down. I think third downs were seven of, of 18 for both teams. And the difference was at the end of the game, they're trying to tie it up and, and uh, we had a player make a play and, and, and get a pick six. So it's 36-22. So we, we see it as a strong matchup. And, we look forward to, uh, to going down there and playing those guys. Back to us with preseason, I think we've been pretty good. Um, uh, very solid in our approach. I think we've got a lot of seniors, so I think our kids, you know, you know uh, are practicing the right way, uh, coming to meeting rooms and, and taking care of their bodies, and I think we just got better buy-in on how to work so practice can be more of a positive environment because they understand the, the process of practice and resting and sleeping and eating and cold tubbing and resting and all that stuff. So they've been really, really good there. Uh, coming out of camp, I, th I think we've gained a lot um, with the toughness and, and the depth that you need. So we've practiced hard, but we're also very, very healthy. We've had a few nick-ups and, 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 you know, a guy might be held out, you know, get, gets an ankle sprain, but he's back three or four days later, whatever. So we're very healthy. No updates, um, um, injuries other than, again, Jay Sean uh, waiting to do surgery, you know, and Camion Patrick and Robert McCray. Uh, we'll miss, you know, the first handful of games. So that's nothing new there. And we've got some guys coming out preseason just based on their preseason reps. Are they ready to play game one or not? Are they ready for game two? You know, some of those freshmen and some of those guys have been backup roles. How large are those receiver and running back and defensive players and special team guys that you guys see? But uh, for most, most, most importantly, like I say, I think we're better and we're more healthy coming out preseason. So I really respect and appreciate the kids and staff, what we're going on. Uh, defensively, you know, you start, we talk to Tom Allen. I appreciate everybody saying, somebody says our fifth defensive coordinator is actually the third guy that's ran the defense. And if you're saying that, that we are on our fourth offensive coordinator. So you can see the, just think about that and the impact that had. So we could have, you know, 
instead of just, you know, right there. So for whatever. But Coach Allen has came in just pointing out statistical facts. Coach Allen has came in because statistically we're six and seven. And this is a brand new year. Those, those are stats and those are facts. Coach Allen's came in, done a great job with the staff, with the guys, getting the staff on the same page, having a practice standard of energy, paying attention, getting the calls, communicating, getting it right, playing hard. Uh, we've got a lot of guys back. We've got a lot of guys got to keep getting better. But we've got some guys on the same page, and it's been very, very encouraging. I think they've had a very strong preseason against our, uh, against our, deep, our offense, have 15 spring practices, 15, 16, 18 summer practices where coaches aren't there, but the kids kind of still run the system and base stuff. And with the linebackers back and, and everyone back in the secondary, and I think the, the game is evolving where you start, you got to stop the run, but you start from the back to the front and the ability to stop the run but not give up pass plays. And you've seen how we played our inability to be good. That's been the Achilles heel. Because if you're loading up to stop the run or you're giving up the pass play, if you can't stop the pass play and you got to break back to running the ball on you, so you, you still start with stopping the run, but with so many guys back, and Coach Allen, I think, doing a good job, the defense is, there's been great buy-in. Now, we're going to have a bunch of, uh, a, a bunch of bumps and bruises and hiccups along the way now. So it's not like, you know, he's, he's got it all figured out. You know, he's got things he believes in, and we ain't got it figured out. We're going to have guys going to have to step up. We're going to get guys that's going to get knocked out. We're going we're gonna to have some things that go our way. They're going to make plays on us, whether it be in the first game, second game, third game, every game. It's how you continue to respond and how you continue to improve. So we're a lot better. I'm excited to see where these guys start. But I'm really excited to see how they go through the year. I think it's got a chance to be really, really good. Kicking game is, 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 is really solid with our kicker and Oaks. Uh, long snapper Danny Gotzel is awesome, return guys. And we've really pushed our punting game. We've, we've basically have, have, have put as much pressure on Gideon, Joseph Gideon, um, Drew Conrad uh, out of Center Grove freshman and put a lot of pressure on those guys just with the practice reps and what's at stake because those guys don't have game reps. And so it'll be I'm really interesting to see how those guys handle first kick for real when the clock's moving, the lights are on, and it's for real. But uh, he's got a huge leg. Gideon will be our guy going out there first. And I think he's came a long way. Excited to see him play. Offensively, you got some experience back. You got Four fifth-year seniors in the line. You got a couple good receivers in Ricky and Mitchell. Simi Cobbs, a veteran back. Divine Redding, veteran back. A lot of good skill guys. And, and what's been encouraging is that our quarterback play through camp's been really good. And not just who the quarterback goes out there is going to be first, but the group. The group is a better group than we've had since the 13th season, where we had a couple, three guys you know you could win with and play with. We've always had a first quarterback. We've always had a second one. We've always had a third, but you want ones and twos and threes that can play. And I think we're closer to that. And I really respect uh, how those guys have kind of came on and went through um, uh, their deal. Uh, going through our team right now, and I don't know, did you put the depth chart out yet? Cool. So you guys got it. Um, you know, Brandon Knight and Coy Crunk will be playing a lot at left tackle. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, B Knight's got a little bit more experience, but Coy's had a great camp. I'll expect both those guys to play. Wesley Martin and Jacob Bailey, you know, Wes is strong, you know, starters, a redshirt freshman, strongest player on our team, him and Nate Hoff, and a great fifth-year player, and Jacob Bailey's going to play a bunch. Wes Rogers at center is solid with Stepniak and Bailey can play center. Dan Feeney, one of the best players in, 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 in the game. We got uh, Devondre Love with Delroy Baker being a little bit better tackled. Devon, Devondre's a big tackle, but we're playing him at guard. And uh, he'll be either one, and, and is a good young player for us. Demetric is a fifth-year guy, so the line's pretty solid. No real changes except Brandon Knight, who started out a little gimpy. He's had a great couple weeks, and he and Coy will handle left tackle. Uh, tight end position down there, you got Danny Friend, you got Jordan Fuchs. Ian Thomas will definitely be playing, and you know, we just listed two, but Ian's well, well, the junior college player, number, uh, I think he's number 80, correct? Uh, uh, that's the number I've been watching in practice. I'm assuming that's his game jersey, right, Keg? Mitch didn't give me on that, did he? He's 80, right? Okay, good. Sometimes they switch those practice numbers and they'll tell me. But he's doing well. Ryan Watercutter, uh, walk-on player out of uh, Dwanger, will be in the mix. We've got some depth at tight end if we need it. Receivers, we talk about those guys with Luke Timmy as a quality backup and, and going to get a lot out of Westbrook. Uh, Isaac James uh, is stepped in there. And really, we got Ricky Brookins playing there. That's, that's where, where Jay Sean was. So that's the one little gl glitch on the depth chart. Uh, Richard Lego's got the bulk of the work for several weeks. He's, he's been the one. Uh, he's gotten every one rep except when we rotate uh, Xander Diamant. 
uh, or Danny Cameron in there. So he's kind of been the one. It wasn't a, a formal announcement needed to be made. I mean, the team has been practicing, knows it, and the timing's been there. So we actually evolved to that after about the seventh practice. So he's kind of been the guy. He's handled it well. Uh, looking forward to seeing how he's, I mean, he's, he's been statistically the best guy. You know, he's 240 pounds. He's 6'5 plus. Uh, Xander is better than he's been and gives us and, – and, and, um, I'm not for playing two guys, but Xander gives us a niche, and so the, his ability to run around, and, and quite honestly, Richard moves and runs much better than what we have with Nate, no disrespect uh, to Nathan, because I know he's doing a great job with the, with the Redskins right now, but Richard can move around, but you know, Xander gives you a dynamic, and if there's the need to play that during the game, even early in the game, with Xander being a third-year player now, it's, you know, you don't, you don't want the offense to get out of rhythm, but you need to take advantage of, of, of some tools. And instead of going to Wildcat where they know you're not going to throw, Xander's throwing the ball better, gives you a skill set. And quite honestly, it's kind of an oar there because Danny Cameron's closed the gap and is really managing the offense as good as anyone besides Richard. And so Xander can make some plays, and Danny's matching, um, 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 moving the team as well as, as any of those guys. Haven't mentioned Austin King, who is still doing awesome and is on, will be traveling and is more talented than maybe the first three guys I just said. He's had a great camp. So quarterback's better than it's been a couple years. A couple years ago, we were sitting pretty deep at quarterback. It's hard to be deep there with egos and everyone involved. I appreciate the way those kids have, have come to work every day. No one's taken it personal. They kept their egos in check, and they've all gotten better, and we're going to need them to keep, keep doing that. We got Devon Redding and Devontae Williams has gotten the bulk of the work there at running back, but Majette will be in the mix. Tyler Nati, the big guy, Clyde Newton's done awesome. You'll see him as a, as, as a big back. Uh, Cole Guest, the freshman, has been very impressive. He will be playing. Very, very good player. So that's offense. Defensively, you're going to see those 8D linemen and maybe a few more. You might see uh, um, Michael Barwick and Darren Meminger inside. Uh, you got Brandon Wilson, Jacob Robinson outside. Greg Gooch, Niall Sykes. We're going to try to get to 10. Josh Brown, a second-year walk-ons in the mix to give us a, another body we need at DN. Uh, linebackers, you don't see uh, Damian Willis. You got Oliver and, and Simmons. You got Scales and Fletcher. And you've also got uh, uh, Damian Willis in the mix and Raquan Jones. Those guys will be special teams players and playing. Defensive back, you've got Fant uh, and Thornton. Uh, you got Bach and Walker outside. Jamie Thompson, who's coming off an injury and back practicing. Probably maybe not playing a lot week one but doesn't have a red shirt year. So by, as he moves through this week, we see what we can get by Ball State, by the open date, you'll get Jamie in the mix. He's back at practice. He just missed the first couple weeks, so he's a little bit behind. Crawford and Cook have been well. Dutra Fields have been well. Um, Art and Tyler are doing good. You'll see Rashard, excuse me, um, Ashawn Riggins, uh, true freshman, 28, a very, very talented corner. You will see him uh, in the mix. And you'll see Marcelino Ball at the Husky position. Uh, and he actually should be listed there with Zeke. Uh, kicking, we've talked about that. Gideon will handle the punting. And so that's the team there as far as depth. So like I say, we're pretty healthy, deep as we've been. Got some young guys playing. Uh, and last announcement, we've just, uh, uh, last week we told four guys, but held off till today. We've got six walk-ons that we've put on scholarship. And the way we do our thing, that gets us either to 47 or 48 in uh, our six years. But the way we do it, it's a one-year deal. You know, we're in a, in a world of entitlement, and when you sign a guy, it's like a no-cut contract. You know, where in the NFL, they'll get you healthy and cut you in a heartbeat. You know, and, and Kelly School of Business over here, if you can't pass finite and get that GPA right, you're out of there. You know, you know they got, was it Business 100X? It's like Business School Boot Camp. You know, I mean, you got to hold the standard. But in, in signing kids now, they get this, 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 this no-cut deal with our walk-ons, and I'm a walk-on. It's what I did. But I see walk-ons get content, and we challenge those guys, you got to earn it back. And so it's no guarantee. And so like a year ago, Andre Booker was on scholarship, and we didn't have enough, and he did nothing wrong, and he wasn't on scholarship. He scored two touchdowns the last three games. And it was awesome. We just didn't have the money by the time we went out and recruited. And, and guys do uh, – Andrew Wilson, who I think scored a touchdown in our Purdue game, was on the season before, didn't. So this year, the guys that we've gotten, like I said, we're either 47 or 48, so we're averaging about eight a year. We got six. We had six to give. And the six guys are uh, Griffin Oaks – who had to earn it back, even though he's the kicker of the year in the conference and one of the best in the country. Danny Godsell, who's probably, if he's not the best snapper in our conference, he's one of them, legitimate player. Mitchell Page of 
returner, awesome receiver for us, Ben Bach, who is slated to start and play a lot. So four of those guys are basically starters, and a couple of them pretty good players in the league. And the other two guys that are, that are great contributors are Ricky Brookins, that you'll see at slot and running back, special teams, kick returner, and Alex Rodriguez, running back out at Lawrence Central, has been with us a couple years, scored a touchdown in the bowl game, I believe. So those guys have all played. And I'd like to mention with those guys, Luke Timian's going to be playing a ton. He's in the two deep. Didn't have one. You know, it was just a business decision I had to make. And he's also would be an initial counter because he transferred in. He hadn't been here two years. So that, that takes away a high school guy. But Luke's doing awesome. Going to play a bunch. Ryan Watercutter, we just talked about a Dwanger. is going to be in the mix playing. Arthur Jones, you've seen him on special teams. He's an awesome kid for us at corner. Kenny Arnold, backup linebacker, has been awesome for us. I've mentioned Josh Brown a couple times. He's out of New Jersey. He's an active DN. I really like a couple of linemen at Greg Fry. I have Nick Ramica and Alex Serrano, a freshman out of Barrington. They're going to be awesome players for us. And then the punter, Joe Gideon. So I think last year when we went to the Purdue, we had 17 walk-ons started their career on that bus. I think we had nine touchdowns last three games with guys with walk-ons. So I want to recognize not only those guys that got the aid and we're proud and appreciate them guys, but those other eight, nine guys, they're a big, big part of our football program and what we got going on. Questions? Good. See you. That was good stuff. Uh, Clyde Newton is the switch to running back. How, maybe from your perspective, obviously, how did that come about? And is there a potential that he could do go, still go both ways? Clyde wanted to do it. He came to us. Because I thought with linebacker depth, we would need him at linebacker. And all we're doing is saying we're 4 two, five. We're starting with a nickel back. But when you play big per personnel or big groups, if that nickel guy can't hold up, a, line, a Sam linebacker takes that spot. And that's what Clyde played. So I actually thought it might be hurting the team him not being on defense. But because we're starting in a nickel, he was kind of odd man out. He, was, he, he went back to play some inside linebacker where we've got a lot of seniors and veterans. So he's like third there. He was a great high school runner. And he just, at the end of spring ball, he didn't practice spring ball one time. He, in spring, he said, I want to go to running back. So the first thing I said, well, we got to talk to the defensive coaches. And are they good? He's going to have great special team value. He's on kickoff cover. He's on kickoff return. He's on punt team. Uh, so he's on three kick teams. Um, He's got a body. If he does well enough, he got a chance to be in a pro camp because, you know, no one plays the fullback. He's 230 couple pounds. He could be 240, 42. One of the strongest kids on our team, about a four, four and a quarter bench. Big hands, catches it well. Uh, but he's been very good with, at running back, and he's natural. And the guys that can run, if you can, you can. You know, you, you got to get tuned up on protections and certain schemes. But, but, you know, he's a great high school running back. He wanted to do it. He's been a good addition. And if we need it for goal line and short yardage, you might see him. Not just going to be a two-way player. He still might be playing defense in certain games and certain situations. He's done very, very well. He did train all summer at running back, Pete, but he was not with, with the coaches. So he's handled it well. He's been, he's been a, you know, he's, he's definitely in the mix to play and play a lot of offense. How hard is it to play in, in this era to play both ways? Oh, it's, well, I don't know. I mean, he got guys are doing it. Michigan's got a great player doing it. And, they're a guy, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, you get limited time of what we can do. So a kid's got to be, you know, it's like playing two sports. You got to budget your time because you got to study on your own the game a little bit because there's not enough meeting time and, and you got to take care of your body. So, I mean, it's, it's, there's some mental overload. There's a lot of guys, we have a lot of guys that can play both ways. It's just mentally, can they handle it? I think so. Um, you know, you got to get your best. I mean, you know, uh, Coach D'Antonio's done an awesome job. He took Lippett, a great receiver, played him at corner. I think he now plays in the NFL as a corner. And um, I think I think Coach D'Antonio's probably done as good as anyone of moving some guys around like that. How willing are you to ride the ups and downs through an entire game for a couple weeks? I don't know. Got to win. You know, is he the reason why or not? I mean, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. He'll play ball. He's been playing good. Other guys are too, though. So it's not like there's no – when we – I mean, when we had those couple guys a couple years ago who were good players, um, I, we, would, we would go to pregame middle and say, who's going to start? I mean, because it was just – I mean, we didn't – it wasn't like there was a competition. They were both good and they were both practicing good and we were just trying to win. And the only time we made a change in was if, if the team wasn't scoring, let's just go to somebody else. It wasn't like if you made a mistake, you're out. Matter of fact, it was, it was the old Coach Smith rule of basketball. You know, he never, Coach Smith never took a guy out after, I know I can't say Carolina basketball in Indiana here, but since I grew up there, I know a lot of people don't like him, but, but, but you know, he would never take a guy out after a turnover. He would the next possession because he just thought it was, it was a negative deal. 
And so, I mean, the, no quarterback. I mean, they've had picks in practice, and we just went to the next play. It wasn't like, you know, you know, you know, you know, so I, I don't know. If, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about it. I'm expecting the team to play well and him to play well. And I have more positive visions than negative. You know, we'll deal with it. I, and to me, he's, going, he's, he's playing the best. The other guys are playing better. Xander gives you a really good change up. Do you use that or not? You, gotta, you don't want to get out of sync, you know, and I just want to keep coming along and, you know, it, it'll be what it'll be. And not being quiet, I mean, I just, I mean, there's, I appreciate the way all of them are playing because to me, you got to be ready with more than one every game, every week, and for the year. You got to have a couple. And I think we got a couple. And the guy that's going first has really had a very, very good preseason. He's made it, was, he's made it like he's playing the best, and everybody knows that. And I think the team has confidence, and I think he has confidence. And I'm sure he's going to have some bad plays. But we'll, we'll, we'll live with it. Well, he's got, I mean, he's got a good arm and can make all the throws. So whether it be the long throws to the field or deep throws, and I think he does pass the ball versus throw it. We can touch it. Not, he's that distant, rare back and, and rip it. We've really had to work as a big guy, had to work a lot on his feet because, you know, he can move around in such that he can get in some bad positions where his accuracy goes down. So when he gets his feet set, he's really, really accurate. But as a bigger guy, sometimes you know, big guys take long steps and you can overstride, you can't get through, you know, you're pointing left, you're throwing right, so it's, you know, you can get off. So I know we just, we've worked a lot of preseason drills of all those guys to get their feet underneath them to play with base. He reads it well. I think we've got a nice package. And, and again, he's picked up the offense well. I think communication is always hard in what we do, being able to verbalize and talk, have command presence. And so that, you know, as a young guy, it was getting up to speed there. It was getting his feet underneath him because when he's setting on target, he's really good. And so are the other guys. That's where Austin King is really good. He is really good. I'm sure you've been asked a thousand times, but what, what gives you confidence that this defense is going to take that next step forward? Well, and again, what's the next step? Because we've got to get better. And with the way we play, we can be better and still not be where you need to be. So, but, the, 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 you know, I think... In our golfing world, Don, it's just driving range to the, to the course. Because on the driving range, going against what is not a bad offense, they more than hold their own day after day, drill after drill, position on position. And they're corners that are, that, are, that are all over some pretty good receivers and making it really hard to throw. When we get, when we get lined up, and I think there's more confidence in the system and what they're doing, when they get lined up, get their feet set and their eyes right, and there's 11 guys doing it, they've been a really impressive defense. Now, can you get 11 guys doing that a lot of times? Because in the day and age of tempo and no huddle and injuries and you're, you're rotating guys around, can you get 11 guys lined up, get their eyes on the reads, get their, get, you know, have, have great eye discipline, get your feet in the ground ready to play so you can attack? And when we've done that, we've been really good. So I think they go against a decent offense and – I would tell you right now the defense is, has, has won preseason. And it's not – I mean, offense has some nice days. But the defense has been which, – which to me, when you go against someone every day, you ought to. You get a feel for what they're doing and you get tendencies. Now, the tough thing in college football, like, like you know, Coach Stoops is sharing with me all the time, hey, man, you guys on offense just run your plays. But on defense, we get a new set of plays every week and new tendencies and new strengths and new weaknesses. And, and it's the ability to have trained reaction. Hey, you get this formation, this personnel grouping, this set, this backfield set, this, what are their actions? What's your alignment? And like I say, when our defense gets aligned, gets their eyes right, and I think, they, I think they're starting to figure out when 11 guys do their job, one guy don't have to make a play, that the defense makes the play when guys are canceling gaps and they're where they're supposed to be, they, 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 they've been good. And again, Tom has been consistent with holding his coaches and his players to a standard. And... That gives me a lot of encouragement. Kevin, what's your biggest concern uh, about Florida International in this, in this first game? Well, one, you know, we saw them play last year, and how they matched up and could, should have had the opportunities to win the football game. First game, you know, again, we feel good about our defense, but I'm telling you, we're going to have some glitches Thursday night. And when you do, a veteran confident defense can cover that up. You went to the course and had your fade, so you made an adjustment that day and played it out. Some guys can't. So to me, the concern is this game one. You've been practicing. We've been trying to do every game situation we can. 
as much as we can. It's still not the game. How, do, how does Richard Lay go? Like, what's his leash? I don't know, but I'm curious to see how he reacts in a game because I know he's been great in practice. I know our defense has been reasonably outstanding in practice. Can you take that to the game field? And so that's my concern is, is, is a little bit more about us. Do you have – it's I, 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 um, what was our girl's name? Um, Dorada as a swimmer, wasn't it? The backstroker, right? The one from Stanford. When she won the backstroke and beat, beat the, the girl from Hungary, and her deal was I had to convince myself I could do this. So it's one thing to have confidence. Our team truly believe and start convincing themselves that, hey, you know, I, I, we, we've been playing some good football. We're a good football team. And so I'm, I'm more concerned about that. That You know, it was all you get new freshmen in the mix, new punter, new quarterback, a couple new skill guys running around, a couple new guys on defense. We've been talking Marcelino ball. You got a new scheme. Hey, when, 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 when the bullets start flying, do you maintain the calm and confidence, make the adjustments you need? So they're going to be a really good football team. They got a lot of veterans. And can we walk that two by four trust board of, of, of now, now the risk are greater? Trust yourself, believe in yourself. And that's every game, that's every year. Has the weather here, th- do you think it's prepared you for what you're going to face? Before? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, uh, you, know, um, I'm, you know, I think we're in, in conditioning well, but we're going to play a lot of guys. Um, we went last night. Um, just because it's week for the first game. So we actually had a night practice last night uh, just to get, get on the lights a little bit. And uh, when, I, when I just pulled up to see what the weather was, it was 87 here. It was 86 at Miami when we started. So, I, you know, there's going to be humidity. You're going to have the, the, the plane travel, you know, which can lead to some dehydration. So we just got to do a great job this week. Of we got a lot of polishing to do. we got a lot of work to do. we got to get game ready. We also need to not overpractice and, and leave it here. You can go down there and do too much. You can go down there and sit around and get stale. There's all kinds of things that you're looking at, and sometimes as coaches we probably overlook everything. But uh, as far as you know, sh- you know, should you know, what should you do when you get there? When should you practice? When should you eat? So we're, my thing is, Don, we're going to have to play a lot of guys, and and the and the weather's got us ready for it. And my my concern is, I know they're a really good team. I'm really looking forward that when it's for real, do we have the confidence? Because last year early now, you know, first game, you know, we we we, we get block punt. We actually block a field goal against Southern Illinois. Everybody remembers the two-point play at the end of the year. Second game is this game here where they got a chance to tie it. Third game, you got Western Kentucky, and it's a three-point game. Matter of fact, we block a field goal to be up by three. And when they scored at the end, we run the clock out, win by three. Wake Forest are throwing it in the end zone. So early in the year, are you just mature enough to win close games? Because early in the year, you, you got, you, you, it's not going to be perfect a lot. And can we stay calm? Stay collective, because you look at their team with a returning quarterback and five O linemen like we we have. You think they'll be mature? So I think it sets up to be a great game, and I'm just excited to see how our guys react and how we react to adversity. Short term in this game, long term as we keep going through the year. But I guess the, the dynamic between Brandon and Coy. I know Brandon missed some time early, but they're at left tackle. You've talked a lot about how quickly you think Coy's come along, but just kind of how do you want that to play out early in the season? Well, Coy's playing well enough. He's, 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 it's, it's almost like, you know, Brandon missed some time. It's almost like Coy's as good, if not better. So it's almost like a competition deal. Uh, it's also to the point, too, that there was an issue with Demetri Camille. You probably play both those guys and kick one to right tackle. That's our three best tackles is, 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 is Brandon Knight, Coy, Coy Crunk, and then Demetri. And so uh, Coach Fry will handle it. Again, I think you got to play a lot. It uh, used to be back in the day you didn't want to change the center a lot, you know, and you didn't change the quarterback a lot because of communication and the center quarterback. But all those other pieces, sometimes you can rotate around. I would expect, um, I got to say, Jacob Bailey, we were high on Simon Stepniak. I expect a lot of those guys playing. Not just this game because it's on the road in the opener, but I expect as we go through the year that Greg's going to play. I think, he, I think he feels really good about seven, and we need to get about eight or nine. We got about eight D linemen, we're pushing for ten, you know, you know if you have your numbers exactly right. The only reason to do it is you could put both quarterbacks on the field at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So you, you have, you, have, you know, I mean, that was actually the uh, matter of fact. Uh, I think Notre Dame made the comment, like, which I made a year ago. If I rated my team, you two are two of the best three or four players I got. I don't want to take you off the field. So I'm just going to put you out here and we'll work it out. I heard Coach Kelly said it at the end. Everybody thought it was a good idea. I said it a couple years ago and guys were mad. I just want to get you on the field. Um, 
So that'd be the reason to have Xander out there. Now, we, got, we don't need a receiver. He's not a receiver. He can go out and play in the perimeter. Richard go out there and be a big guy. You know, he can do, you know, but you don't want hits on those guys out there. Just, you know, Xander gives you some running skills that the other guys don't because he is, he is quick. He is competitive. He's a dynamic run guy. And so the only reason you would do that is you would want both those guys on the field so the coordinator wouldn't know prior snap, is it more of a run guy or a guy that throws it a little bit more. That was kind of the dynamic when we had Nate and Trey years ago. It's like, hey, you got two different skills, two really good guys that have different skill sets. He was at Eastern Michigan when we were at Miami, Ohio with Coach Walker. This is his first job. He went from Notre Dame up to there. So I remember this day when he put it in, because he was, he was, I remember this day they were stretching ends on, they were doing push ups, and, he, and, and as a former deal, it was, it was on command. And it was very, very loud because they're trying to teach discipline and how to listen to, to the calls. He's always been a disciplined coach, he's been a defensive guy. Um, I know it's a little bit different time at Louisville then, uh, but uh, again, we've competed. At, he was at Texas. Um, and I might be wrong, he might have been on that LSU team in the national championship. I believe we played at OU as well. So we've crossed some paths, I think, probably four or five times. Always been a 4-3 guy, quarters, real tough, real physical guy. That's what his defense play. You mentioned, um, you know, walk on yourself. Is, is there a better part of your job than telling a walk on that you've had a scholarship? And what do you well, I mean, it's, it's really good. Now, I'm, you know, everybody's gotten into all the giddiness of – the presentations and, and a year ago, you know, we, we had our AD do something that was cool. I asked, I told Mr. Just, I, I go to me, this is just a big part of our team. I was going to handle it internally, but I wanted y'all to know, cause I do think a lot of these are local kids. It's good PR for their high schools and for them and their families. The tough deal is I got a couple kids that are about as good that should get one. I didn't, I didn't have it for. And it's, it's the, the it's good. I, I know uh, um, uh, Fred said years ago, when we started, he had, ma he had made a comment to Alvarez. Did he have any advice? And he said, uh, he said, you know, work hard to get the high school coaches on your side in your state and, and don't minimize the walk-ons. And while I was at Miami of Ohio, we're talking about that with Coach Cooper, walk-ons were big, you know, because we thought, you know, sometimes the walk-on kid could develop. And like a couple of those linemen I mentioned, uh, Ramica and Serrano, the only difference is they're 6'2 instead of 6'4. But one of them weighs 320 pounds, he got pretty good feet, he's pretty tough. That kid will get in the too deep if he just keeps coming along. And so uh, it, 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 it's a great honor. Um, and it's a big part of our team. And the only tough thing about it was I, I selfishly wish I had a little bit more for a couple of guys because me, I got, I got one or two more that have earned it. I just didn't have it in hand right now. Yeah, he's, he, he, he got a ham and he's out there just so he's running this morning. And so he's like, say, um, uh, you know, he's played a lot where well, that's different than Jamie Thompson's missed a lot of time and just getting here. So some of those guys have played more. He gets a coach. You got like a, you got last night in our practice, I had Cole Guest catching every punt and every kickoff. And I said, you know why I'm doing this? He said, he said, I need to work. I, I said, no, I need to see you do it more. So I feel good about it. And so, you know, some of those guys that have been, they're, they're coming back with you. If they played, they'll get back in the mix because they've got those bank reps. You know what you got. Now, again, I, I would anticipate um, the way he was just running this morning, he'll be full go this week. And like I said, I don't think other than some of the guys are just, just moderate. I'd like to think we're going to be game ready with a bunch. So we'll see. And, and like some of the guys, like we might have been talking about a recruit that we thought could have been in the mix. If he's not playing enough game one, either he's not ready or maybe he missed a little time and he just, we just don't have enough coaching confidence yet. And you just try, you're always trying to get that. And you've got a week here where as hot as it is, coaches, we need that time, but we can spend too much time on that field and go down with the tired football team. We can also rest. And that means there's a balance there. We're, we're looking at a lot of angles to make sure this team comes out ready to roll because they will need to. You guys good? Week one last week, you, uh, you held up eight or nine guys. Is, is there another list of guys that you expect to uh, miss a game? Well, I hope not. But, <laughs> but, uh, but again, when if, if, you know, appropriate times. Well, I actually, uh, there was one last year that I just didn't, uh, you know, the players didn't like a guy wasn't going to class. And I said a guy in a game no one knew about. It wasn't that big a deal. It just wasn't following team rules. So if there is those things at appropriate time, it'll be dealt with. <laughs> Right now, no, because games are coming up. And we'll be practicing not today, but tomorrow. So, we're good? All right, guys, have a good one. Ladies?